So in the last video, we saw that how we can pass on the prop, but other guy was not ready to accept the prop. So in this video, we're going to uh, resolve this problem. So let's go into the single to do, which was said as to do single. And first and foremost, we are going to go up in the style. Make sure it is scoped. What scoped actually does, it keeps on your styling refined to that particular component only. But there is a little bit more to it right now. I think that's all you need to know. So we're going to just add up simple one completed, which is going to be a simple uh, line through styling that we are going to have. So let's have a text decoration, which is going to be simple line through. That's all. That's all you got to have. OK, now let's see that how we can make sure that this component actually accept the props. It's actually very easy, to be honest. So what we go ahead and simply say that, hey, I need you to accept some of the props. And there we go. That's it. Now, it's very important that you should know the name of the props. In this case, the to-do string is going to come up. So just make sure you mention that to-do string will come up, which is going to be of type string. String, there we go. And the, another one which is going to come in is going to be completed, which obviously is of type Boolean. So let's just mark it as Boolean. There we go. So that's all you need to actually run it. Now what you can do is you can actually go up here and instead of the to-do string, you can go ahead and inject the variables here. I'm going to go ahead and say this is my to-do string. I'm going to say and paste it. And now notice something interesting that we are able to grab all of the list here. That is all. That is all it takes. So I told you, it's really simple. It's not really that much of a big issue. Now, apart from the props, I would like to add a bit more in here because we are going to be using it a little bit later. So put up a comma, say that there will be some data. The only thing that you have to remember in the data, there is always a return. Otherwise, it's going to give you an error. So make sure you keep that in mind. There's going to be a property which is going to be uh, is editing, so which is going to mark whether I'm in the editing mode or not, because we are going to load up the form and stuff. So I'm going to show you that in a second. And there's going to be another one here, which is going to be saying new to do uh, string. And that's going to be initially empty. These are the two data. Don't worry too much about them. Right now, that's all what we got. OK, now what we want to do further is we actually don't want to display the list just like this. We are going to have a bit more on that. Basically, we're going to have a big list, list item. And inside that, on the very left hand side, we're going to have this list, uh, this to do being marked. Then we're going to have a form, then a button to edit, and then a button to delete. So <laughs> this is going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to go ahead and use the magic video editing. I'll fast forward the things and I'll give you as an exercise file that all of these things are there. But if you want to write, I'll give you enough of the time. You can pause the video then and can write it. Now let me go ahead and use the fast forwarding mode of the video. OK, so I'm back by adding a few of the things. So what I have done actually, and this is how it's looking like right now. Don't worry, we're going to fix the all the editing issues. So this is basically how things are going to be. Now, in the final application, this thing is not going to be available uh, simply because of the reason we are going to conditionally render the things. So whatever is going to be here, we're going to model that information inside this form so that user feels like that they are just editing directly inside the text. But in theory or behind the scenes, they are actually editing inside the form. It's just like they don't see the form. And that's how every application actually works. And we are actually placing them inside the button, which is absolutely necessary. Notice here I'm having this edit and the delete button. In the final application, I'm going to go ahead and replace them with the buttons, which are going to be icons. But I don't want you to confuse too much. Maybe you don't know about the font awesome icon or something. So I just want you to have these are uh, basic bootstrap button. The application is going to look much more cleaner in the final version. Uh, we are not here to discuss too much on the part of CSS, but that's what we got. OK. Right now, this has nothing to do with the view except with this string that we are injecting or this variable that we are injecting. So we have some of the buttons in which we are injecting the string. The form is 100% empty. is just like any other form that you see on the web. And this is just like an ordinary bootstrap button. There is nothing fancy going on right now. And that's all what we want to keep in this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you that how we can inject the data model and can pass on some of the things like uh, edit the to-dos and all these information. So how that we can do, we're going to do that in the next video. I know this is a bit shorter one because it took me a little bit while to actually uh, write all of this. So we're going to catch up in the next video.